Hi, I'm first going to talk about my technologies and then about policy. Um, I moved from Los Angeles to Israel 10 years ago to get into the technology world. I moved back to the United States uh, two years ago to bring them to market. I got interested in renewable energy and decided that I wanted to make game-changing innovations that would save the planet. And I, so far I filed around 30 patents in different areas. I first like to tell you a little bit about them. They're somewhat related by being influenced by a discipline called computational fluid dynamics. That sounds like a mouthful. I'm going to make it really easy for you. Uh, imagine that there's wind blowing at one meter per second. The relationship between power output and velocity, power is related to the velocity cubed. So that's one times one times one, one light bulb. If you increase that velocity to two meters per second, then you get two times two times two, which is eight light bulbs just by increasing the velocity by one meter per second. So you take that, and then on top of it, let's say you apply it to water, you multiply it by 1,000 because of the density of water as opposed to wind. So you work with this kind of uh, enhancements of power, and we make geometries that can cause the speed to be higher at the point where it hits the blades. And now let's see how some of it applies. So first I'm going to talk about hydrokinetic power. I'd like to thank the NHA for inviting me to come here and speak. Um, uh, my company called Pioneer Valley Renewables makes underwater turbines. They can be used in rivers, canals, tides, and ocean currents. In November, we did a demonstration in the Connecticut River Canal System in Massachusetts, and it demonstrated that we were making well over 100% more power per water speed than the conventional three-bladed uh, regular uh, underwater turbines. Uh, that's a game changer, and we're now negotiating our first contracts. Um, and I'd appreciate, by the way, if everybody in the audience can think of places in their districts where we could do this kind of thing. So this efficiency advantage is so high that we can afford to manufacture this in the United States. And we are planning to manufacture in the United States, mostly in a depressed industrial area in Massachusetts, but using as many other suppliers from the United States as possible, and also in the local locations. Um, and the same technology can also be applied to small and medium-sized wind turbines. Uh, and we hope to get into that as well. Technology number two. We call it the wind energizer. Now, I'm going to wave a magic wand, and I'm going to show you how we can improve the power output of the very large wind turbines and wind farms by at least 30% without even touching the turbine. Now, that may sound like magic, but what we do is we use the discipline of computational fluid dynamics to make models of the wind turbine, the wind and the terrain. And we make structures maybe 50 meters, maybe 100 meters away from the turbine that change the wind before it hits the turbine. It's a uh, very unique, innovative solution. And it works. We've proven it on a small scale. Uh, and this is something everybody should think about for their district because it's a great job creator. After the high-tech work is done, it's farmed out to local construction and uh, installation firms and metal fabrication firms. And this can be huge for all the wind farms all over the country. And what's more, because it lowers the effective speed at which a wind turbine starts to turn, uh, is that it opens up new areas of the country for wind energy. Next technology. We make small wind tulips for flat roofs. Now, they're beautiful. That's why we call them tulips. They're quiet and have low vibration, but there are two major impacts on the cost of energy. And those are one, that they start at lower speeds than other turbines. And two, this is what I call more zoom in less room. Um, there's a cluster effect. They're designed in such a way, and this is one of the patent pending things that I have, um, is that if you place them at the right distance next to each other, one improves its neighbor by 20%. Most wind turbines, you need to separate 
make it far away. Now, this is a game changer because if you were to imagine where would the solar industry be if you had to put one panel on one end of a roof and another panel on the other end of the roof and nothing in between. So this opens the capability to make rooftop wind farms. Okay, uh, next one I'll talk about, final technology I'll talk about today is in-pipe hydroelectric. It's applying hydroelectric to piping systems. Every piping system around the world has areas where there, are, where there is excess pressure, pressure that you don't need to run the system. Now, what usually happens is the water utility either lets it leak, and that's of course important for people like you, um, or they put in a pressure breaker, which wastes this pressure as heat. Imagine having a pressure breaker that can make you money and give you the right pressure that you need to run your system at the exit. So this is a unique approach, and the application is not only for water utilities, but even uh, sustainable buildings. If you look at a building like this, it's probably being cooled right now by water circulation, and there's probably a chiller in the basement that the water is flowing back into continuously. That's building up energy that we can partially recover uh, by putting in a turbine in the pipeline that's descending. Uh, if anybody knows the engineer for this building, please let me know afterwards. Okay, so let me suggest some policy measures that would help. Number one, encourage innovation. Now, I've been busy with innovation myself. Uh, everything I'm doing is at an early commercialization stage. It takes money. As Trey pointed out, um, the amount of money going for research and development is very low. The number of good ideas that get turned away for government support is very high. You just simply have to put in more money or you're not going to get the innovation and you're not going to get the new jobs. Now, when you put in this money, it's important to make rules that it should go to small companies that need it and for fundamental, not just incremental technology. In other words, if there's a game changer. Now, the fact is, is the way most people are, and most people in corporations and most reviewers for uh, the Department of Energy, um, they don't like to stick their necks out with something new. So unless you write into the rules or the laws that the money is to go to fundamentally new approaches, um, then it's not going to go there. Um, another area to revise is SBA loans. Now, if I were running a nail salon and wanted to expand my business, I can get money more easily from the SBA than if I have a high-tech firm that could turn into a billion-dollar company. Um, so that should be revised in such a way uh, <laughs> that um, we can do something about it. Another thing is, um, as everyone pointed out, there are a lot of unused dams in the U.S. If you were to fund hydrokinetic as an alternative to putting the old Francis or other kinds of turbines in place, um, that would open that up for hydrokinetic to do what it does. Hydrokinetic means you don't have to stop the water and then start it again. You have the extra energy from not stopping the flow. I'll make the rest fast. Uh, another area is patents. It sometimes seems like the patent office is trying to increase its fees. They find all sorts of great ways to deny you a patent, and sometimes they get very silly. Um, so that, and it's not just the US that does it, it's other countries. I've heard that China purposely does it this way uh, as part of their overall economic strategy. I don't know if that's true or not, but I did hear it from somebody who heard it from somebody who worked in the Chinese patent office. Um, these are all things that can be worked on and make it easier for innovative companies to put their money into more important things. Okay, so uh, I'm getting messages to stop. I'd just like to say, that, conclude that we can do the transition to a sustainable economy if we have the right vision, will, policies, and funding. And in this transition, hydropower has the greatest density of power, and we should do whatever we can to help reduce the red tape that's involved in bringing it to market. Thank you.